Hello and welcome to the special edition of Awaaz the Voice. And today we have a very, very, very special guest from the Hindi film industry. He is a Dada Sahab Phalke Award winner. He is a Padma Shri. He is a Padma Bhushan. And 18 uh, national award winning gentlemen with lots of other awards as well as uh, oh, uh, the list is endless if you go. Uh, to his home and see that he is probably surrounded with the awards in the film industry. A very, very, very warm welcome, Shyam Banigal sir, uh, to Avas the Voice Studio, and thank you for agreeing to speak to me. Thank you. As you are. Thank you, sir. You have never said no to me, even if it was in the middle of the night, and I am grateful to you for that, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, so it's just a freewheeling, normal conversation. but uh, we'll we'll try to provoke people's thought with this uh so just uh, 75 years of independence we are celebrating and you must have been 12 years old when we achieved independence yes so um, how how does uh, uh, how do you recall this and how did you sh- how did it shape your boyhood your youth and finally your middle age at 13 and you could make your first film well you see when uh, india became independent i was i had moved into uh, the middle school you know in my school i finished my primary section and moved into the middle school and uh, i was i think at that time in uh, either second form or whatever it used to be called in those days you know i was about Four years from uh, being, uh, uh, you know, passing the matriculation examination. Four years before that, so that's when I became, uh, when India became independent. And I remember that particular day very much because uh, you see, it was a uh, for the first time we heard Joala uh, Nehru's voice. You know, Nehru's voice. Yes. And um, he. But he didn't reach there. But uh, that that very day, you know, the, the, before that, we were woken up middle of the night. Uh-huh. You know, parents had woken up, woken us all up middle of the night. When he made, and, uh, I couldn't understand <laughs> what he was saying. When he made the trist, you know, the, 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 the famous speech of Jawaharlal Nehru, which is one of the world's great speeches as you know and uh, that is the speech midnight you know when you know when the midnight hour when he started that speech now having heard that and then of course gone to sleep and then went back next morning to school and in school of course we had uh, a function in my school which was a kind of of It had nationalist pretensions. Let me put it that way, because you know, at that time, most of the schools used to be only that was the same God gave the king in the in the morning. So you know, the English, if it were, you went to an English language school or uh, English run schools, you know, you could uh, you could, uh, uh, say uh, because most of them were either run by Uh, Irish schools or something like that. It was always a kind of some young UK-based people at those schools. If you wanted to learn in English, so the and this was a, a very unusual thing that happened because that I went to school the next morning. Uh, the for, for the first time. Uh, we were assembly and where the Thai color went for the first time in our school. And with the Thai color like going up, we all stood up. And of course, at that time, we, we, we although there was Janakana Mana, but most people, in fact, knew Sarija as well. Yes, ma'am. That, that was because. Was written by Lama in Bengal, and then you know, and it used to be the common song whenever the Congress party used to sing at their own sessions. 
तो वी ऑल न्यू सारे जहां से अच्छा नो जरा कहना मैंने वो मोर डिफिकल्ट एट दैट टाइम बिकॉज़ इन व्हेन चोसन ऑफ वर्क इन द कंस्टिट्यूएंट असेंबली एट द then you are to since it was not in hindi you know it was not in hindi or hindustani or so it was, yeah it was very easy for you to learn at that stage but of course soon after that we started to sing that because then we did sarjas it became a national song while the anthem was janagan right and yeah so in my school we always used to start the day with janaga namal and then we finish the day with sare ja oh very interesting yeah so that was a very <laughs> that was that was something that happened in my school and my school which is the if you want to know the name of my school because i grew up in sikandrabad hyderabad area so yeah. the It's called Mehbu College High School, you know. So, yeah, and Mehbu College High School was named after my Mehbu Ali Pasha, you know, the, the last Nizam's father. So it was named after him. And uh, so, so the, uh, but it was an English medium school. Otherwise, Hyderabad at that time, most of the normal schools were only medium. Telugu or no Urdu medium. Urdu medium. Few, the Urdu medium schools, and so yeah. this was an English medium school where we had languages as a second language. We had the choice of either doing Urdu or Telugu. Very interesting. Yeah, Very it was, it was, because it was Hyderabad state, but the they gave prominence to Urdu. But you could choose Telugu if you wanted, you know. So you had the op option between those two. But a third option was offered. In okay. my, a third option was, which was if you wanted, you could even take Sanskrit. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So it was, but then Sanskrit meant that it was the most difficult language to learn of all three. You see. So, but <laughs> most of us chose to do Urdu, mm. but some of us also decided that why not let's see if we try on try Sanskrit. And the funny part of it was that I took that as an optional language, and I found that my teacher himself did not know any Sanskrit. <laughs> so, so how did you manage? <laughs> No, we we only read we only read about you know we read about the, uh, the two mythologies, the famous you know, Ramayan Mahabharata. Right. But right. the fact that we did nothing about Sanskrit, but <laughs> 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 it's very funny. You know, but the fact was that that how it was, you know, because and you know it was so after the independence, there was a great deal of confusion. In the land, we, how, what should be the manner in which the school system should work again in independent right. and so on and so forth. You know. So right. anyway, so all of those things were happening at that time, which was very exciting for a young mind, you know. And um, yes. so that's what I remember from the beginning of uh, school, meaning beginning of uh, middle school. Then after that, of course, we got used to many things. And by 1950, of course, it was very clear exactly um, mm. how we, we would move because we become a republic. We were no longer uh, yeah, we were no longer dominion status nation. We were proper of India, you know. And so, 1950 onward, there was a great clarity. And, right. And then, because the constitution came into operation. Right. In part seven, it was only they, they, they just uh, thinking in terms of writing a constitution for the country. So anyway, all that happened. Now, what else would you like to know from that time? Because you know, I'm. <laughs> I would like to know how did it shape your boyhood? 
because the kind of filmmaker you had been uh, you chose to make very different film that film industry almost never knew only one satyajit ray used to make a kind of films that acclaim at all kinds of international awards and you were really impressed with him so what kind of a child were you that you actually at 39 made a film like ankur and uh, you must have been very serious kind of a child no not in as or something like that we were talking about how how it shaped your uh, boyhood your youth because the kind of films you made were very different that film industry was not making well you see when i one of the things about my childhood was my father was a still photographer yes and as a still photographer uh, we were very familiar with photography you know because we also used to take the, the pictures on our box cameras and all that kind of thing but the important thing was that he was also very keen uh, he was a keen kind of amateur 16 millimeter filmmaker but he was making films to tell story he was making films about his own family interesting and yes father, yes and the, the, that 16 mm camera silent the excellent camera he used to be, you know people like come from very large family yes six sisters four brothers <laughs> yeah yeah six six sisters four brothers so ten of us so my father used to every when every child was born uh, he would make a film about that child Until the big time came, you know. So the first two years, the, the average was every two years there would be a child, additional child in the family. So <laughs> he would make a, a film about his children from the time they were zero to, to the time they were two and a half years of age. Then he would lose interest in that child, and the mute child was there to make a film. <laughs> <laughs> so we had, we had ten films on all ten children. You know, we had our own films. So these films, my father would show with his guests. You know, when we had a guest over for dinner, and when they would come, he would very proudly would show the films about the children. Yes. So you. Yeah, so he had these films, and he used to show them. So we were very familiar with the medium, right. because, and uh, it was not a strange thing for us. And apart yeah. from that, it was we staying in cantonment area, and uh, we had a cinema, a cinema which was not far from where we lived. You know, about. Uh, Less than four hundred yards, actually, and um, in that particular cinema, it was the Garrison Cinema, and, and, and as the name suggests, you know, the Garrison Cinema means uh, it was meant for the army garrison, yeah, the cantonment area, and that Garrison Cinema, because it was an army cinema, they used to have films in several languages. Right. Weekends were always films that were English, English film and Hindi film. Yeah, the you, English film from mostly from Hollywood, and yeah. then you, from Monday onwards, you know, every every one two days there would be a change. You would have a film in Hindi. You would yeah. have a film in Telugu. You yeah. might. You, They have had a film in Marathi, but most of them were Telugu and Tamil films, you know, because you know, he, I was in Hyderabad, so, you know, and then the uh, he would have Hindi films, the Bombay film industry films. Yes, yes, yes. So you had these three Indian language films, that is Hindi, right. films, uh, uh, Tamil films, and. Uh, we can on with english language so there was a and you chose to you chose to watch english films and hindi films 
Yeah, no, it was e e easiest to do that because you see, it came on holidays. Mm -hmm. okay. be, yeah. Otherwise, schools, you, you can't possibly go to see a movie when school is going on. So, right. it, on the weekends, it was easier to go and see the film. But then, right. even then, we couldn't really afford to see, go and pay for a ticket and see a film. Because, you know, my parents couldn't have, you know, flowered up on that. But uh, I got very hooked on to films. Largely because we had the 16 millimeter film camera at home. And we used to have our own screenings. That, oh, interesting. Yes, at home. So I then, you know, made friends with the projectionist at this cinema. And uh, I used to go there along with my older brother, two of us. We used to go there. And the projectionists were showing the films. We would watch the film from the projection. Oh, so that, interesting. Yes. So that way, we saw a whole bunch of Hollywood films. You know? So more than any other film, we saw more Hollywood films than any other film. And that day, at that age. Uh, yes, and uh, the my uh, my father was very interested in uh, indie films, right? You know, the Bombay films. So for which the entire family would be taken. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the in family family viewing of films was usually uh, Bombay films, uh, which the family used to do. Uh, of course, there was the Telugu films and so forth. Those films, occasionally, the you know the, the, the maids and so on in the house. So they had all the seats. See My mother would take them out to see the Telugu films. You know, that, right. Uh, things like that. Right. You know? so, so we were very familiar with films. Let me put right. it that. And therefore, so we nat natural interest in the cinema. And of course, growing up meant that, you know, in those days, the, the uh, you used to get these little leaflets uh, that told the synopsis of the Ab films. About the film, yeah. yeah about the film. And uh, you, uh, the most well-produced ones used to be that of the Hollywood films. OK. Uh, Very yeah. interesting, yes. Yeah. So I had a huge collection of those. You know, okay. They, yes, I okay. used to collect them. And uh, you know, like collect comic books. So I used to get, uh, collect comic books as well as this. So that Very was the library. I mean, as a, as a child, you know. And then of course we started to read so and so So right. that is how the interest in the cinema actually developed. But and you, sir, if I may interfere, uh, you had a very different choice of the kind of filmmakers you liked, Coppola and Martin uh, Scorsese, and uh, uh, a couple of Iranian filmmakers that you talk about, and later Rita Pandav Ghosh and uh, Adur Gopalakrishnan. So is it because of the kind of films, uh, serious films that you saw that you had a very different taste, uh, uh, liking of uh, different filmmakers across the globe? Well, you see, mainly because, of, you know, my eldest brother, he was, a, he was an artist in Calcutta. And when he used to come home for holidays, one of the things that he had discovered in Calcutta was neorealist cinema. You know, began it immediately after the war, after the Second World War. It only started develop a film industry and you had a well-known Italian director to make a very famous So they, they, they started to make films and that was the cinema it was called Neuralism. Neuralism. Yes, yeah, in uh, critical circles. And uh, right. soon after that, the French that also got out of the all dominated, as you know, that part of the world was dominated by Hollywood. Uh, 
um, really when the, the, the it was since it was Europe, you know, in Europe, because it, they wanted to shake off the dominance of American cinema on them. Okay. They wanted their own stories to be told. So sadly, you develop the Italian neorealist cinema. Right. Yeah. So and the same thing happened in France a decade later, which is a which they call it Nouvelle Vague. The new cinema. And then right. you also had the British New Cinema. Right. Yeah, so Europe itself went through a change, trying to break away from the dominance of Hollywood. Right. Right. Putting their own films, producing their own kind of um, thought out films, and not get totally dominated by America. In right. India, in India, what had happened was that the uh, so-called what we call commercial cinema, the, that was the dominant kind of cinema we had, whether right. it was Hindi, whether it was Marathi, whether it was Bengali, whatever language you can think of, in India, where films were being made, now they followed the other side. The, Different trajectory because you know it was it was kind of an extension of what professional theatre was. Interesting, very interesting. Open, yes. open professional theatre. Right. Bombay and Calcutta used to have urban professional theatre. Now right. professional theatre, as you know, had a very distinct form. They used to have kind of melodramatic uh, plays, you know, yeah. Aga, Kashmiri type of thing, you know, yeah. right, right. those kind of things. And yeah. in that, one of the important things was that you did a, you told a, a dramatic story, acted it out, etc., etc., but mm -hmm. in order to keep the audience interest for about three hours, three and a half hours, they would three hours. Take, yeah, three hours when you know full entertainment for the evening. So right. yes, in order in order that the audience will not get bored, you know, with see they had to have comic asides, oh, oh. comic interludes. Yeah. You would have songs. You would have songs, mm -hmm. and uh, that is only when the sound came into the cinema. Yeah. You know, Right. Yeah, came in cinema. It, it was a big novelty at that time. So, but in order that, you know, because it's still very primary kind of sound films that are made. It was yes, still, sir. You know, it, 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 was, it was not technologically uh, fully developed. Modern. Yeah, yeah, right. but, but still, it was a novelty. But right. in between, in order that people wouldn't get bored with anything. There mm -hmm. would be live acts. Oh, like, interesting. Yes, okay. you, would have, you would have intermissions. During the intermission, you would have a little dance thing or you would have a song. You know, things like that. Now, right. those, those got included right, in the form of the film itself when sound came. Oh, oh. So OK. Yeah. If when you went to the cinema, you didn't need to have live performances with the cinema. Right. You got integrated into one. They were recorded and shown. That became a form. Right. That became a form of uh, Indian cinema, popular right. form of Indian cinema, which has remained right. almost until very recently. Right. You know, because it was. It, it, it's it, one of the most important things about Indian cinema, as you know, in the sound era, was not just the actors and stars and so on and so forth. That because this form is such that you develop stars, but right. more than but more than stars, you also had very famous music directors right. and very famous playback singers. Right. 
you know, in the beginning, of course, the actors themselves used to sing. Yes. Like, if you like Kel Saigal and so on and so forth, they sang their own song. Yeah, yeah then. Later, later, your audience wanted to be, you know, the, the quality of the singing had to be better. The right. musical company had to be much more professional, all of these things. So then right. found that the technology in order to play back singing. So even if the actor didn't know how to sing, you just had to find and you could get a really first rate uh, playback singers to sing. Like, you know, you could have an actress who had no ability to sing. could do both. But, but suddenly you had Asha Bosley singing for her, you know, the singing for her, and so on. You know, it's the same thing. Or if you had a nice. uh, uh, who is a very kind of a romantic actor, then you would have my book singing for him. You know, and, and Rafi would sing for everybody. For everyone. <laughs> <laughs> right. I wanted to know because you, you made your first film at 39. Uh, while you wanted to make it uh, at the age of 20. So what, number one, what did it take so long? And the kind of films you made, were you confident that uh, uh, cinema, which was, which was on those days, a very inward looking, multi-star or multi crore film, Shole was, Shole was ruling the roots those days. You came with Ankur and you, you suddenly changed the definition of filmmaking. And people started calling you uh, it alternative cinema. So number one, why did it take you so long to make your first film? And second, uh, when you made these films, one after the other, Ankur, Nishan, uh, Manthan, and people started calling you pioneer of alternate cinema. How did you take to those terms? Well, you see, when uh, I wanted to be a filmmaker, the moment I started to uh, use my father's 16 millimeter camera, to tell stories right. of our own as a right. as a good boy, but and uh, you did yeah. also. Yes, I you did. did. Yes, I made I made the, my first film was called Chutyomay Majwada, which was about mm -hmm. kids playing and you know, somebody gets lost and you know the, the lost and found story that sort of thing. But uh, more than that, I think what got me very interested in wanting to be a filmmaker was because one of our uh, cousins was already a filmmaker. Right. Guru Dutt. Yeah, Guru Dutt. Yeah, so, and Guru Dutt was uh, actually a dancer. You know, he was a Guru Shankar. Guru Shankar's troop. So he was... Interesting. With, yeah, and he was with Guru Shankar. And, and my uncle, one of my uncles, used to do all the film publicity and also publicity for Kudashankar. Right. right. You know, when, when, when this troupe used to go travel all over the place, all the publicity material used to be designed by an uncle of mine in Calcutta. So, right. at that time, and Gurdath family, that is my cousin family, they, they used to live in Calcutta. He grew up with the right. And then my uncle got Guruda, you know, because his interest was only in dance and the arts and so on and so forth. He said, you know, since you show so much interest in dance, maybe that's where you should go because otherwise you're just wasting your time because you're not doing well in school, you're not really interested in studies and so on. So you're not, you were not so, doing well in. Sorry, you were not doing well in school and <laughs> you didn't tell us this. <laughs> Dr. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Not, I, did, I did very well in my study. It was, huh, one can make. Yeah, yeah. It was a, I'm talking about Gurudar. So, my uncle was in Calcutta. Right. You know, he knew the music director, the Shankar's music director was in fact a cousin or some such thing, you know. He was a very well-known uh, music director called Vishnu Dashirani. So yeah. he got, yeah, so uh, Gurudath 
introduced to Vishnu Chirali and said, Look, why don't you try and get this boy to uh, join Uday Shankar? Right. So he joined Uday Shankar and uh, went to Almora, where Uday Shankar had his uh, uh, dance. Right. And Guru became a dancer. Guru Dutt became a dancer. By the time he was 17 and 18, he was already with the troupe. Right. Uday Shankar's troupe. So yeah. he was, you know, somebody who from there, when he made his first film, you know, because like, he came, from there he became a dance director in the business. You know? Yeah, in yeah. Bombay. And right. here he got an opportunity to make his first film, which was Bas. Yeah, yeah. Bas came and when we, it became a very successful film. Right. And Gurdas was very young. He was only about 25 years of age. Right. 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 So he became, in some way, a kind of you. Idol for you. Yeah, yeah. But when you're young, you you suddenly say, my God, this is it, 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 just wonderful. I mean, he's become a well known filmmaker and uh, excellent director and so on. And he's only 25 years of age. So my ambition, when I, was, I said, when I finish my school, I'll join the college. And the only thing I want to do is to make films, but I should make my first feature film by the time I was 25 years of age. <laughs> yes. yes. I have, I have, yeah, I've so seen that. Okay. Yeah, there's a, you know, this kind of ambition that also drives you forward, you know. Yes. Yes. Uh, also, you know, my interest in Sarma or my kind of my aesthetic sense was developed very quite differently. Yes. You know, so it was not based on uh, any films at all. Right. So I You're... was more, more interested as I was growing up. Right. More interested in films that were made, like say, for instance, Eurealist films in Italy, uh, the new cinema of uh, France, you know, uh, the Nouvelle Vague of France, new cinema of Britain, and things like that. So, right. you, actually, our, the way I started to look at film, and the way I said how film stories should be told, you know, when they, when they become believable. They are not kind of, uh, they, they don't, they want to get involved, you want, they want you to get involved in life rather than get from life. Right, right. Yeah, every life. Because, you know, the, our, our film entertainment was, you should forget about your everyday cares. You go to the cinema to forget all of that. You're taken into a kind of dream world. Yeah. And, you know, you, uh, a kind of escape from your everyday life. But you but never I, objected to that either. You said those who want to make entertain films for entertainment, let them make it. I want yeah. to make a different kind of a film because people primarily go to cinema for entertainment. That is what you had said in an interview to Girish Kanad Sahab, I think. Yeah. No, no, no. But the fact is that one, there was never a question of not wanting to entertain people. People, otherwise, why will they come to see your film? Right, right. They will right. only come to see your film if they are being going to be entertained by it. But so my definition of entertainment was evolved differently in the sense that you can get films, I mean, audiences come and see your film. If yes. they can be involved, like, say, for instance, when you read a book. If you read a novel, it doesn't always have to be the kind of what uh, you can get in serious books. Yes. And you can get yourself involved in stories that are told seriously. You don't necessarily have to get somebody to write a thriller. You know, so you can have a great edit. That 
will also hold attention. Similarly, apply the same principle to the same thing with Prince Rodney. And because of that, my interest grew in wanting to make films that would be, you know, not not like this. So th that's why the interest in your realist cinema. Now, more people like Kurosawa uh, and Shibaya and so on. So they were making very serious Italian cinema. Yes. Not escapist films. And that was what got me hooked on to say that look this is what one has to create in our yeah, I, yeah. and the, suddenly when I was in college early in college I I used to be a, a, a competitive swimmer representing yeah. the college and the university as well. So in one of the inter university swimming championships I they represented my university in Calcutta, also the my state actually. And nice. the national swimming championship was taking place. And my uncle in Calcutta said, Look, since you are so interested in the Sarma, have you heard of the Sarma? He's just made a film called Pate Panchali. Pate Panchali, yes. Yeah. Pate Panchali, and maybe. You would like to see that film. You know, you're so interested in films. And he's also very interesting because he was a commercial artist before he became a filmmaker. And that's what yeah. my uncle said. And uh, so I, I, I took time off uh, from my competitions and then went to see the film. When I went to see the film, I said, you know, on business, I Dreaming about the kind of films I want to make, so that as it immediately is realized in this man, you know, when he made one. And I wanted to meet him immediately. Nice. Yeah, but it wasn't possible at that time. It was possible the next time I went to Calcutta. Right. At that time, he'd already made three films. You know, so he okay. had made up here. But Trilogy of. Oh, yeah. There yeah. Is not the third part of the trilogy was not done, but he also made two other in between films like John Saga and so right. on. You know? so, right. so, when I, at that time, then I said, I went to meet him. I telephoned him and I said, Can I come and see Because by this time, something else had also developed in my life, which was I was part of a group that started the film society. Okay. And having Thanks. started the society, we were like minded people. So we started by showing all the new nearest literal so, friends, new Japanese cinema, different kinds of people from different parts of the world. And so, Very interesting. yeah, so doing all of that, then mm -hmm. when I went back to Calcutta, I wanted to keep paying. So I telephoned and they said, May I come and see you? you know, mm -hmm. I didn't think that he would pick up the telephone. But he picked up the telephone when I called him. So he said, yes, sir, You can come. So, but I was given very strict instructions. Said, based this time, he asked me to go. Don't be like that regular Hyderabadi, you know. And it would be like six. That I went seven thirty. Typical Hyderabad style. So I said, nice. Not to think. So we go. So I went exactly on time. Met him, and then he started to. Chat about. He got very interested to know. Interesting. Very interested in, and so he, he was not. I was first off. He was company. Uh -huh. By the time, because you mm -hmm. see, so what was happening was that because he was talking. I mean, his friends 
who knew, uh, knew his work very well. And uh, he knew them extremely well. Right. You, when you know each other so well, your mm -hmm. conversation is, is not of the kind of uh, level uh, right. that, that, that becomes an exposition of anything. Right. I met him, then he suddenly you know, went into everything, I'm theories of cinema, ye, go, palana, all this kind of thing. And so it was a very exciting evening. And for me, it was like uh, heaven. You have to Ankur him to you You showed know. your Ankur. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it was so exciting. And mm -hmm. um, so we went on like this. And he also, he, he read this person, right? you always have dinner by 8 o'clock and all that sort of thing. But we went on till about 9, 9 30 o'clock until his wife got very angry with him. Saying, <laughs> you know, the most wife too. <laughs> you know, I mean, the dinner's getting cold and this fellow's talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, that thing at, as that always happens. Anyway, so I was till about 10, 10, 15 or so like that. And he never asked me to leave. And I oh. didn't really leave because it was such an exciting evening. Anyway, yeah. I left about 10, 10, 15. And after that, I kept eating. Whenever I went to Calcutta, I visited the Sets, etc. And when he came, the uh, sound um, uh, the recording quality of right. uh, the thing was not as good in Calcutta as it was in Bombay. So most of his films, except the first couple of films in Calcutta, the rest of them right. he would mix in Bombay. Right. The sound mixing thing was done here. And right. because that year, it, was, it became quite easy to meet him. Mm -hmm. And I met exactly. him every time he came, you know. So, but when I actually started making the work of each of us, the first film that I made, Uncle, he was the, my first audience. Oh, okay. That's so interesting. Okay. He yeah. was the first audience. Yes. Because I wanted to know his opinion before anybody else because i and if i, I yeah, if i remember my, yeah because you know, i i saw him in my mind as like a good you know so i said he, he must see this before everybody else and comment on it and see whether i'm, I'm going on the right side so it was, it was my and he of course also was very really surprised that I was using anybody from the I was following any filmmaker's life. My own style of filmmaking. Right. So after that, then we became, you know, this kind of senior to junior, it became more right. great. Know, more, more people who could uh, discuss uh, yeah. things about the cinema. You know, the you know, way that you would uh, discuss, you know, if you were having an academic discussion between two people, you know, it was like that. So, and I used to enjoy that very much because he didn't have that kind of stimulation in Calcutta. You know, right. it, I didn't have. That kind of stimulation in Bombay. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was very interesting to have, um, you know, have him as both a mentor and also a person. I could discuss things with that of the problem. So, uh, I, well, I have yeah. read some, if I could interfere, I have read somewhere that uh, when you showed this film to Mr. Ray, uh, you, he asked you, what do you want from this film? 
you said yeah. i just w- wanted to uh, wanted to run at least uh, through a week yeah. through the week he saw the film and he said it will run more than a week and <laughs> your film will receive national award so no. is it true sir i said i i would be very happy if the film run for a week okay <laughs> okay right so <laughs> then he said it will run for many weekends oh wow wow what a visionary he was and yeah yeah in fact selma which is very close to my office here right the selma called ganga here you know right at least it ran here for about five weeks right and you re- <clears throat> sorry you got national award for it and consecutively for three more yeah. films you got national award it eventually garnered i think over the years it garnered for 36 awards yeah. nationally and relatively nationally and all over the place so so then so yes sir no so you know that was that actually helped me uh, to decide to be a full time filmmaker sure so sure. you know, i was afraid to jump into filmmaking like that because i was too afraid to be part of the main stream because there right. i would, would be what would i be i mean nothing you know i would just be some like somebody else you know i would be a carbon copy of someone you know, who was popular at that time so i i put but, my own way yeah but you did try to better later and you made the trilogy of in a way on muslim uh, muslim women and three films you made again uh, you got all the national awards and its people started calling you uh, calling you pioneer of uh, alternate cinema how did you react to that at that point in time and what do you think when people call you again the pioneer of alternate cinema in india yes. well you know i like uh, that uh, that uh, i mean always to me because uh, you know, there were lot of work because making films in different parts of india Marvelous filmmaker. They were already making wonderful films. Right, sir. I couldn't. I mean, it would be wrong to consider me to be kind of the you know the some kind of a alternate cinema person in the sense that I created some kind of a new cinema. I did not. It was part of that group. The right. They were they were making in their own the languages. They were pictures, very different from what was at that time a uh, popular commercial cinema. So right. whether it is good adur or Ritik, Renal, any one of them, they were making they were kind. Of but not making the difference right that's your humility sir i would like to know uh, you uh, the, the very uh, what makes uh, what makes you uh, uh, what draws me to your film is that you have uh, portrayed women in a very different way like you have been very sensible to their their sensibilities uh, and uh, right and you made very neat and clean films Yeah, their reproductive rights, their exploitation, and their empowerment. How could you think like a woman in most of your films that you have made? Is it because you you were among them, or you were watching the films, the kind of films that you're watching, or you were among with your cis pictures who were largely dominating at home? What was the reason that you could make such sensible portrayal of women in your films? Yeah. so i just wanted to know the sensible portrayal of women that you do in all your films where does it come from well you see i come from a large family 
and uh, I, we were four brothers and I have six sisters. Yes, and they were yeah. dominating. <laughs> yes, yes, in in the family certainly, because you know, they and they were all their own very independent people. And they chose their own professions and everything else. So they were not uh, what you might call a typical conservative right? of either race. Conservative and women, they were not like that. You know, they were not sitting there uh, waiting for They were doing things up to you know, on that point. And uh, independent, you know, educated. That some of them uh, that became teachers and professors and like my but my sister in Tandrik. Now he sent her there. She went on a for her own education. They were very independent minded people. And that encouraged in my family. Father, particularly, yeah. his behavior. He didn't sort of say he was just sit down, settle down, get married, have children. He said, you, you decide what you wish to do. Because don't think that this is a, only a man's point, it's also a woman's Right, right. So it, it was because you know, it was the it was what one might call a kind of revolution that was taking place in urban India right. Right. during the time of the nationalist movement. Right. Like you say, for instance, but somebody like Aruna Asafali, you know, so, somebody like Saroji Naidu. Yeah. Yeah, no, people like that, they, they were. Nobody called them feminists, but they were. They were empowered, yeah. yeah. They were perfectly empowered. So that was a, a, that was something that my father believed in. Right. Nice. It's just more important is that they should be empowered. Don't sit down and say that you know we, we, have, we have the money for the dowry to be married and stuff like that. So. That was because that was the environment in which I grew up. So naturally, the stories that I was thinking about no. and the qualities in them, I, I was kind of sitting there and saying, "No, no, I want to." But it automatically happened that many of my early films were women-centered films. No. The, the central character was always a woman. You know, and uh, because you see, it's also the experience of most people in, in India that you, you you see the woman in the center, center not the that she holds the family together. Yeah. She holds the family together, and she also is the person who creates the continuity. She's the one who what goes to the younger generation goes by her rather than from the male parents. Right. Because he is outside of the house. Because his mother is outside in, in the house. So you that's the domain of the woman. You know? And that right. has, yeah, and, and that has always been so. But it was not so. Necessarily recognized like that, you know? right? right. Uh, so it's a it's only a question of recognizing what is the actual fact, not what the male ego talks thinks about. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. you know we don't, it, it, that's how you know with because the men writers write so what what Im emerges. Is the ego personality as well as males? Right, right. You know, right. Yeah, yes. yes. You have to get over it. So, 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 uh, 
but please carry on please carry on yeah so that is that's basically what it is and uh, once you are aware of that then you you are not doing anything consciously right 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 that you look at the world in that fashion right became a part of your system so do you regret in a way that now uh, the film industry the kind of hindi film industry that it is making from it is again going back to those almost 70s time when we were making those films inward looking films multi star or multi cross and then we have these ott platforms but and a little bit of alternate cinema we do have very less of alternate cinema we have one extreme of ott where crime thrillers are doing very well and uh, other one is entertainment cinema now how do you look at this entire bollywood now and say from 10 years 15 years from now no but you are using uh, terminology that's no longer relevant right okay. because there's no okay. such thing as alternate cinema you know right. they, 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 it was at one time but yes, today sir. there's no such thing so nobody thinks like that even because the people people have become much more educated about um, audio audio visual means of education and entertainment and also the media has expanded in a big way because the audio visual media does not mean cinema it means mm-hmm. television it means It means many other things. So we talking about visual media in a very different way than what it was when the world was different. Right. Right. So and now it's not just larger than life. Is it because it was larger than life because you saw it larger than life as well in the cinema? Because of lack of medium, yes. We are seeing it on a screen like this. We are often seeing it on a telephone. Mm. <laughs> so it's a, it's a question of uh, how you receive it. You know, so you we receive it in many different ways. Right. Right. Yeah, and therefore there are many different forms as well. So actually, it's, you can have a three-part. Um, or you can have a learning series that goes on for year after year after year <laughs> you have so many different ways of uh, um, getting audiences involved in what you have to say you know yeah. so it's no longer what it used to be it it requires a new definition Yeah, and I don't right. think, don't think it's easy to define it now. That's okay. why we we keep we keep using old terminology. Right, right. Yeah. That's interesting. That's yeah, very that's, interesting. Uh, basically, <laughs> that is the problem. So we we don't need to do that, and I don't think you should worry too much about that either, because right. you know the things that is, that continue to be relevant is grammar. Yeah. So, filmmaking remains the same, and it gets extended as well. It's the it's right. like language, right? There's a, there's right. A graph, and then the idioms change. You know, you don't have the same idioms for everything. They change according to you experience, and you you use it. So you have idioms that change. So, You, you should look at cinema from that point of view, and it will no longer be seen as it used to be seen in the past. Right. So a lot right. of people miss that, you know. So, so you have um, groups of people. You know, about, a, about a decade ago, they used to be in America. In some, they used to be the film society. Yes. Okay. Who used to call themselves foops? Okay. F. F. You know okay. Oops. Okay. No. Old, friends of old films. 
Okay, like that. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, because, yeah, because you know those those are the kind of films that they continue to enjoy. It was kind of nostalgia. Right, right, right. We still have that. We do live in nostalgia largely. You see, about the you know you say. I mean, there are people that you go into a conversation about films. You say, "Oh, those good old days." Right. You know, oh, yes. Used to so on. You know, but then things change. Maybe. You have to, you have to recognize that, and you have to recognize that the well, method of communication extends right. the uh, they become different, but also right. remember the reach. You know, so, and also how you can express yourself. The extent so, of both expression and reach. Thank you. you know, so the medium itself is it, it, it's changing, and right, the, right. once you recognize that, then you don't you don't you don't worry about all of that. And you so how do you right? So how do you see the film industry going and say ten years from now, fifteen, twenty years from now, the kind of films we are making, and uh, 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 and the kind of ideology difference of ideology that it kind. creeping in the film industry some kind of an ideology is being drilled into people uh, all of that uh, together how do you view uh, the film industry many yeah. years from now it will go on changing this will go on changing and don't right. automatically assume that you know we've come to the end of something we have not no, no. no you, we haven't i know we have not and in fact we are we are evolving exactly like everything else evolves you right. know things will die out certain things will live certain things right. will be born you know all this kind of thing happens it's, it's part of life and so because it's part of life i think we make these easy uh, convenient judgments for ourselves you know i i, I don't think those things to be necessary Because I right. personally feel that there's there's plenty left to be done. You know, as right. long as they have their imagination and they wish to, to the you know, the, they they have the, the, the wanting to create something, do something, right. get media. Right. And if, right. as long as that motivation is strong, you go on doing it with whatever yes. form you have, with whatever yes. form. And right. your case of Andley, you know. Right. Yeah. So, how do you like the term Bollywood? Somehow, I have never liked it, and I always called it film industry. So then, on the analogy of Hollywood, there is Bollywood, the Tollywood, Bollywood. How do you like it? If you well, do, I, I never liked it. I don't use the term. I, I have never right. used the term. Now, the fact is that it's a, it's a it's a term that has come into the language now. Right. Yeah. We'll so have to a, live with it. We have to live with it. It's it's a, <laughs> that's not just used in India. It is the term that's now internationally used for the right. drama. You know, it's a Bollywood which immediately slots it into a certain kind of filmmaking, a certain kind of film, certain way of telling a story, and so on. You know, it's right. like. You know, like in America, you said independent cinema. It, it, yeah. it was distinguished between what was Hollywood, the type of film, and right. what was independent cinema, which is which was three different forms, you know, free flowing forms, different kinds right. of things, more individualistic, and so on and right. so forth. Yeah. Right, right. So I wanted to know. you uh, the kind of films you made and then you came till now uh, uh, i have heard the film industry is largely very cruel how did you survive all these days in the industry where you made a very different kind of films where your producers earned money than you did and then you made this zubeda and you made bharat ek yatra bharat uh, uh, yatra and bharat ek khoj how did you survive all these years in a industry which largely very Uh, not very. It's cruel, they say. But Bharatik Khoj is a 
different example because bharat yeah. was basically uh, trying to bring it to the other you know like yeah. friends and boy yes what do you know there what what kind of content you can have that right. could to be you know not, not just offer entertainment that like so so i offer you entertainment but have a sort of content that involve that you know, get, not only entertain the um, you know, like in, in, um, escaping your entertainment life but also right. a certain amount of knowledge for yourself to get to, for you to get to know your background your own history and so on and uh, mm -hmm. that's how when the particular guy when Doordarshan party decided before all these uh, proliferation of uh, commercial uh, channels and everything that they would introduce start off a seed on Ramayana. Yeah. yeah. You know, in terms of, you must know your own uh, background. Right. So, Mahabharat, you know, the epics. Yeah. Which the, are the traditional epics from India. Yeah. And then, yeah. at that time, what would the another project came up and that project was, um, i was among the people who had suggested the project right but similarly why aren't we doing something about the history of india right. interesting yeah so and then of course the uh, information broadcasting ministry at that time and also the security information broadcasting and that, 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 that is, uh, of course I mean, why do we think in terms of uh, 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 I mean, tell the story of the history of India and I say right. perfect history of India which is not truly history but it's a right. point which right. and probably a viewpoint that a lot of people in this country Accepted was the viewpoint that Nehru offered. When he was yeah. In India. yeah. You know, and he was trying to discover one country through this kind of rumination thinking about the right. You know, yeah, the, where, where do I come from? Where, where, what, what, who are we? Right. What, what have we inherited? You know. And where are we going? Now, naturally, that kind of thing. So, I, when we discussed it, uh, uh, I made this here at that time. I said, this is a yeah. good uh, series. So, I said, yeah, that's the first thing that strikes me that I like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and they said, it's not just discovery of India, thinking. Right. Slightly larger terms. I said, no, I'm. I'm in doing this government, but not necessarily point the point of safety of the hero. You know, yeah. it, 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 it might have been there, but then everybody else is historians. Different right. historians and different uh, interpretations of our own right. So I decided to put together a group of people. I had a bunch of writers for each. Each media, and I had uh, my historical advisors. So, and then I had wonderful writers, right? Headed, of course. Yes, and, and all of them, you know, Shamas had the looking over that uh, department, and that we did. Sort of episode for the whole year. Right, and, right. Yeah. So it ran, you know, week after week, we would have, of course, it got it got extended because uh, we were, right. Nehru had ended it before at the point when, uh, before it became, it became independent. But we, you know, we, we took it a little. 
further. And further, also, yeah. And also okay. uh, sort of looking at the future of our country. Right. So that, that's that what is. that. So, so it was a time when Gurdas was showing you Brahman, showing you Paratik Hoods. So, what is your biggest happy? Biggest what? What is your biggest takeaway from from the film industry then? Well, my biggest takeaway is that it gave me an opportunity more than mm. anything else. You know, the kind of things I wanted to do. And of course, right. it, was, it gave me an audience which nobody believed would happen. But it did me, it gave me an audience. But even more than that, I think what has happened is that it gave me a certain kind of recognition. Yeah. 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 And uh, not a bit uh, core of documents from what I gave them. Because he's in touch. Sir, you touch wood by the, by the grace of God. God, you have sturdy voice. You still laugh a lot. And you are, you are, uh, you are older than our independence. So God bless you for this. <laughs> So, how did you, how do you keep fit and how do you uh, survive all the traumas that the country is going through or has gone through? How do you keep your mental faculty so strong and your voice so strong? Well, I I do yoga in the mornings and I read a book. Okay. When, <laughs> okay. when I'm right. not making films, I'm reading. Okay. And uh, uh, what, what's your routine like? Uh, uh, when you get up in the morning and I want to know this because people uh, when I told many people that I'm going to interview Sham Ben Sahab they say please ask him how did he keep so fit uh, what does he eat uh, what does he do <laughs> so I just uh, want to know what is your routine well, I, I, I mean eating is not a big deal because I'm normally a vegetarian it's rarely that okay. Eat meat. Okay. Because as you right. grow old, it's a question. Your diet is that it's a matter of simply a matter of choice. Because given choice, I'm a great meat eater. <laughs> I can't eat very much meat as I do grow. Uh, but uh, yes, I keep a fairly disciplined uh, work to eat. And uh, certainly, I uh, I mean, I don't miss the, the exercises in the morning. Oh no, my God! Yeah, right. I, I, you know, I have uh, I am, it's a combination of uh, yoga and uh, some other uh, exercises, and I was to keep my limbs fit. You know, you know, as you grow older, uh, uh, what gives way are your legs. Back gives me. Mm. Very careful. But my but mental yeah. faculty is strong. <laughs> mental faculties will go on accordingly. Don't forget that brain is also. <laughs> right. Right. Your your daughter. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Know what you say? Sorry. Your daughter is your daughter Pia is a, a fashion designer, if I'm not wrong. Yes, she is a costume designer, and yes. uh, and she works with me, and also right. independently. Yeah. Right, sir. Right. A, he, he has a nat She has a very good aesthetic sense. Right. And a uh, choice of color. Bet yeah. Right, right. Betty, kiski hai sir? Basic. <laughs> so, uh, as for, uh, 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 people call you grand young man. Nobody calls you grand old man anyway. <laughs> so, so, what is what is your preoccupation these days? I've heard you are making some film for for OTT or something. I no, would no. like to know. I'm making a um, feature film. I, I'm making a feature film on, on. Shake 
Tripura man. Oh, very interesting, sir. Very interesting. Yeah. It's an Indo Bangladesh co production. When are we likely to watch this film? Well, you, it should be ready by the end of September, early October. Very Even nice. at some, some time, yes. It's in Bengali. The main language <laughs> is in Bengali. And right. uh, most of the cast is from Bangladesh. Oh, which, uh, interesting. But the crew is from both sides. The main crew is from India and uh, we have other. You are also work. producing. You are also producing the film, sir. You are also directing. Of, no government. Okay. Of India, government of Bangladesh. Together, I'm okay. producing. But Very interesting. I'm, I'm directing it, and uh, uh, we have done most of the uh, creative work with support from Bangladesh. And uh, that's a very good thing. I am there also, like say, for a lot of particularly a lot of politics. Right. You know, you need advice, the expert advice from the other side. Right. So, yes. right. so you would be, and it's a co production. So naturally, you can't just think uh, that you have a point of view and that's a point of view you're going to True. take. True. True. It, True. Has be, it has to be. Both ways, you know, right. it, it right. has to be fair to them, and it also has to be fair to us. You know, it may have friction from that side, but the fact is that you know, we live with right. each other. We have to live with each other. So of course. Getting of course. So you're and not making any film for the OT, sir. No film for the OT. In future, you aren't thinking about it. Well, I mean, let me finish this. Film. Once, I finish, <laughs> once I finish this film, <laughs> decide what has to be done, what the next project. Because there are so many things, you know, when you take a your thinking of anything, not just. Right. And Sir, I'm very greedy. Yeah. What format? Sir. It depends on what format. But that format right. depends. On the way it is financed, you know, right. it, it is not right. entirely you know, medium which it will do. Right. You're doing that form, it will take the right kind of uh, right. must find its medium correctly. You know. right. that, it's not just cinema films that you can make. Right. Okay. So right. I'm sure in uh, size compared to what else that you can Right. Sir, I'm very greedy when I talk to you, but I know <laughs> that we, uh, I told you that I'll not take more than 45 minutes. What is the biggest advice that you will would like to give to your fans, your admirers, young people who want to learn from you? <laughs> well, you know, the most important thing is that you, I think you, you should make your own way, choose your own way, how you, what you want to do. Because if you say you want to be a filmmaker, then you must yeah. tell say what kind of films would I want to make. Right. Not to say that I'll be a filmmaker. Right. You know, yeah. Right. What, what is your special interest? And what is that right. Is that so many factors come into the picture? Like, say, for instance, I may have a certain ambition clearly in my head, but maybe the opportunities are not necessarily conducive to all of that. So, what has to happen? How will I be able to adapt myself to the circumstances outside? And how will I make use of the circumstances? That are allowed to be, you know. Right. That important. The, your own ambition is very important. Clarity of what you want to do is important. But more than that, the reality around you is also very important. So, you, know, you, know, you, know, you can't be tilting at the wind. Thank you so much, sir, for to Avas the voice. I'm grateful to you. You have never said no to me, and I'm. Uh, grateful to you from 
on behalf of our as the voice group thank you sir we would like to see you again someday thank you thank you sir thank you sir. Bye.